Being prepared, how important is that for young drummers? And beyond playing the instrument, getting outside and learning song form, it's interesting, we're gonna talk about that in a minute. Uh, no, it's, re it's really true. Fortunately for me, uh, all my early uh, playing was in bands, you know, um, uh, bands in high school. And so, um, you know, I had the opportunity uh, that Dave Grohl talks about, his advice to young musicians is find other people that are like-minded, get in a gar garage and play until your hands bleed. You know, play with other people. Yeah. You know, and so fortunately, same for Lee. We were always in bands, and uh, and so that was that was my preparation was learning lots of different songs and you know playing as many gigs as I possibly could. I didn't do any casuals or anything like that, but it was just lo lots of being in lots of bands and you know going playing playing at Elks clubs yeah. and you know. The high school parties, yeah, frat all that parties, stuff. all kind, all kinds of things. But that's bars in Hollywood, absolutely <laughs> downtown L.A. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one of the bands that I was in called Things to Come. I think I mentioned this to you. We were the house band at the Whiskey A Go Go for nineteen yes. weeks. Amazing. That was the, that was a real learning experience. It was the first time I ever heard you play was in Things to Come. Yeah. The preparation is really, really important. If, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna do a gig for somebody for the first time, or, or even sessions, I'll, I'll write my own charts out. They're, they're not. It's not a chart that anyone else could read. Sure, right. But yeah. it's, but it's just for me, so I know, you know, so I at least have a reference if I have to check it. And I find, I find that doing that, I find that making a chart helps me to learn the song. That helps me to memorize it because I actually can see it. You know, I can look at it and go, okay, I know what these parts are now. We have a great new, uh, new course on Drum Channel, which is uh, how to write charts, just like, you know, not, not transcriptions, but just song form charts so you can see, yeah. see kind of where you're at. Uh, our dear friend Greg Bissonette is, if you go to a session and you look at the drum heads and you see things written all over it, you'll know Greg was there. <laughs> before Greg's, <laughs> Greg's so anal about his but, charts. I mean, I, I look at them because I do a lot of sessions with Greg. And I look at his stuff and it's just hysterical to me. I mean, he's got different colored pens for different yeah. sections. He's the one that did the course for us. So oh, that's great. <laughs> so that's, you're going to yeah. see it, right? I'll tell you, I'll tell you a funny story. Um, I just recently did a playlist party for DW with Jewel. And it was really interesting where, where the format is they had me come up with five drummers that influenced me uh, and pick five songs of their performance. And, and one of the drummers was, of course, Jeff Beccaro, and the song was Lowdown. Mm -hmm. And we, Jeff woke me up. Jeff was the drummer that made me go, oh, man, you better start practicing a little bit, you know, because he was doing things that I didn't know how to do, you know. And so I, you know, I thanked I thanked him for that. But one of the things I did because of that wake up call was I called Greg Bissonette and went and took some sight reading lessons from Greg. Ah, nice. You know, at his at his at his house, which was really fun. And of course he's amazing. You know, he's a great he's a great teacher. Oh, for sure. You know, and so it was He'd only come out of his shell. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, <laughs> right. Open right. Up and a and maybe be a little nicer guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he said he was backstage and warming up on a pad uh, with Ringo. Ringo happened to walk by the door and said, what are you doing? He says, well, I'm just warming up a little bit. He says, what? You're playing and there's no band. Why would you be playing drums without a band? <laughs> <laughs> it made no sense to him at all. What, kind, what are you, this makes, this is crazy. I love, I love that. Uh, That's funny. The importance of a drummer's role in a band. Uh, I know we've touched on it a lot here in the conversation, but as, as you sit down, not yourself, but as you would be encouraging a young drummer maybe a student who would be sitting in for the first time playing with a band, what would be the key things you might say to him that you would think he would want to be? He's done his practicing, he's got his rudiments down, uh, but he's never played in a band before. What are the things you would think he should, aside from become best friends with the bass player, yeah, no matter what you do, that's maybe number one. usually money involved. Right, number in one, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, uh, it, this answer is an answer that you'd probably get from lots of people. It's to listen, to listen to, uh, to what's going on around you and, uh, and try to be the glue to hold everything together, you know, to just, it's like, you know, drummers are kind of like um, the string in a string of pearls, you know, all the, the other instruments are the pearls and the drums got to tie it all together. So listening is very key to that. You know, and um, I'm sure I'm, I'm sure that uh, my the bandmates are going to have some 
especially the guitar players are going to have some interesting answers for you. So I don't want to infringe upon any of theirs, <laughs> but, um, but it's listening. It, listening is really, really important. And of course, preparation, like you said, that's all done. And uh, just, try, just trying to you know, find, what, find out what the whole piece is. And don't, don't think of, of this music that you're about to play as compartmentalized. You know, try to make, try to bring everything into one, so it's one big beast moving in the same direction. You know, and you and you you'll know it because you'll feel it in your body. You know, you'll you'll feel comfortable, and then you'll you you'll know that you're you're actually doing it. Your body will tell you. Let's take a moment here. What your bandmates have to say about this, including this bandmate over here. Okay, <laughs> we'll be right back. Well, the first thing I would look for in, in a drummer right away is if he's listening to what's, what he's hearing. You know, a lot of people don't pay any attention to the song they're playing. And uh, to me, a good drummer has to have a real strong song sense. Aside from if he doesn't have good time, he's not even going to be able to sit there. But you have, to be, have, you have to have an open head to hear the song that you're about to play and l really listen to what's being asked of you to do. Once that's established, then it's, it's an inherent sense of verse, chorus, and how to interpret these things, and, and how to follow a singer. It's really important for a drummer to pay attention to the song that's being played. Russ Kunkel, I know from working with Russell, a lot of times Russell will have the lyrics by him, not only just to have the sheet music, but he wants to know what's being said because he's really expressing what the songwriter is saying, and that's so very important. So those are some of the qualities I look for. Yeah, a good drummer should be listening and paying attention and responding and reacting to what everyone else is doing. A good drummer is supposed to help the situation. And a good drummer should know that it ain't about him, it's about the, the whole thing. And a good drummer should have great time, of course. That that's, goes without saying. But also be able to have a feel that lights people up, that lights his fellow musicians up. You can't learn at home in your bedroom. You gotta go out and play with people, respond to them, have them respond to you. And I think that's what makes a good drummer. Well, first of all, you want to make sure that the drummer doesn't steal your girlfriend because they, they always seem to do that for some reason. Uh, that's a sign of a good drummer, though. <laughs> but uh, the, the, the drummer does, to, to me, there's a, the, everything those guys said is, is first and foremost, but the drummer has this interesting role of both following, as Wadi said, but also leading. Somehow yeah. the great drummers do them both at the same time because we're, we're going with the drummer. The drummer has to say, say this, I, this is where this is. It's very true. At the same time, he's following the rest of it. That's a tricky thing. I don't have enough brain power to do that, but, that's, but the drummers who are great, like this fellow right here, do that. And, and I'm always looking like, can you lead me and follow me at the same time? Uh, that's that's really point. true, yeah. Well put, the drummer yeah. has to play like a leader. Right, but has to be listening. It's like I always say, the drummer, the, the hardest seats on the stage are, first of all, the artist, the lead singer who ha is leading the show. There's a lot of pressure on that person. The next seat, the most important seat, is the drummer's seat, because if the drummer isn't carrying his weight, the whole show falls apart, right. and uh, That's right. it's a disaster. So It's interesting you say that, because many years ago I was in the studio at A&M, and I, I came into, I'm, you were on the record, I came into to watch a little mix session with Shelley, Shelley Yakis. And he was explaining how he gets the vocal and the drummer. Right. He starts with those two things, because if those two things aren't working together, none of the rest of it's going to sure. work. And yeah. that's true in, in the band as well. Right. What about you, Sklee? What's your idea of a good drummer? Well, I agree with everything that, that you guys have all said. It's, um, I look for confidence in a drummer. When they sit down, they're in, they're in command. You know, they're, they're not sitting there kind of a little anxious about things. They're excited, but not you know, nervous about what they're doing. Um, and, li and it's ears. It's really listening. I heard a great, great quote the other day where they said, don't lose the dance floor. <laughs> and to me, that yeah. sits really on the drummer's lap right there, yeah, man. I if like you're that. rocking and it's solid, you know, and the people are there with you no matter what the kind of music is you've done your job and uh yeah and, and and the joy of my life has been being with russ for you know a half a century right now and every day it, it is an adventure we we have kind of a symbiotic relationship where things don't have to be discussed and when i work with new drummers um, once you sit down with them and you start playing and it immediately 
does like the Viking, Vulcan mind meld, <laughs> and you, you come together, then that's when the magic happens. But you really have to have big ears and listening to each other. So in terms of the camaraderie of you guys being a band, uh, and the importance of the rhythm section in the band, not mm -hmm. just the drummer in the band, you're in a band and the tempo picks up a little bit, uh, the song. Is, is there anything wrong with that? Is, is the drummer's job to have to keep it a strict tempo? Uh, if it organically is just, how do you guys look at it within your band? Does it have to end up, are you trying to always keep it from moving forward? Or what's, what's your opinion on that first? Um, I think first off, it, it, that kind of a question is, is predicated on so the song. Um, there's some songs that really want to just sit exactly and never move, and there's other songs that want to breathe. And uh, you know, I have no problem if, if like a chorus picks up and then you get back to the next verse and, and it sits back. That's a dynamic. Yeah, that's yeah. the dynamic of it. Uh, so I, I don't have any issue with it. I have an issue with it if like the drummer's time is bad and he's just rushing for no reason at all because he's nervous or something like that. That becomes another situation. But musically, I don't see, see any problem with it. And the really great drummers like the Russ Kunkel and the, and the Jeff Picaros and Carlos Vegas and those, I mean, when he's playing to a click, you would never know there's a click going on. That tempo is solid, but it's breathing. So there's this little dance that's always taking place around the click. Um, that's a genius art, by the way. That's a, that is a skill that, that really um, you have to work at. But I think... There's, this was going, another drummer thing, though, um, and I think this pertains to drummers, but it was told to me as a bass player. Hal Blaine told me he was down in San Diego doing a gig with a young bass player, and he said the young bass player just whipped it all out on this gig and a, a, did it all. And when the gig was over, he came up to Hal and said, so what do you think? And Hal looked at him and said, I think we need a bass player. You know, I mean, how instantly you're the, but I, it would work for a drummer too. I mean, if you come in and you, and you impose yourself on the music, I mean, when, when I do a gig with people, I kind of know everybody's parts. I listen to it to where I know what Russ is doing. I know what the guitar parts are supposed to be. I know where the vocal is supposed to lay because I hear it as, a, as, an, as an entity, as a whole, and not just focusing on my parts. So the last thing I listen to is me. I mean, I, I, I get confident enough to know my parts, but I want to I fit in all of this. And I think it's really critical to really be aware of what everybody's doing and listen to it and respond in like, find your spot in it and don't impose yourself on it. Beautiful. So to your question, in this particular band, if, I'm, if we're playing along and maybe we played a verse and a chorus and I start to feel... Is tempo speeding up a little bit? Is it, is it leaning a little bit? What I'll try to do is very subtly just let it settle back down again without, without just with such nuance. With a ton not of a, fill not, or any not, particular Not even with a fill, just, not even, just, just kind of like think about chewing gum slower, you know, and just let it, you don't yank it back, but just let it just breathe for a second. And breathing is really important. One of the things that drummers really need to know how to do is to not hold your breath when you're playing because that's what will get you to speed up or slow way down. You know, you have to breathe, you know. So that's what I'll do. I'll go, okay, I got, I got to pull this back now very subtly somehow, you know. So that, but we don't, it doesn't happen a lot, but sometimes yeah. it does. Like today when we were rehearsing, what he said, that, that was a little fast because one song we just kind of let it, you know, we we're heading for the barn door a little bit. But when we do them for real, real, we usually put them right where they're supposed to be. Yeah. yeah. But I try. I, if, if, uh, I'll try to subtly just breathe, you know, chew the gum a little slower. And it's also, I think, if you're a drummer working with a bass player, I think make eye contact. Yeah. You don't, I, I hate when I see bands playing and nobody's looking at each other in the group. Russ and I look at each other like all, we're always like shooting glances back and forth, and sometimes there's something going on with the guys in front. Like like when we the know guitar it. player makes a mistake. Yeah, <laughs> and so we can look at each other. And go, yes, yes. But no, but we we're, we're cognizant of each other, so we you know I can tell when Russ is going to start to pull something back if it's right, and I, I'll immediately go with him. I'm not going to fight him on that. I'm just going to go with it. I think it's important to have that 
even if it's not a verbal dialogue, there's a musical dialogue that's going on between us. the hill 